said that it's already done. This is maybe somebody saying something to me about that. To the right of you there. Douglas. So, you, uh, welcome to St. Paul Presbyterian Church in Peterborough. We're very glad to have you with us today, the first Sunday of summer and Father's Day. Oh. So, welcome to all. I do uh, thank everyone who's taking part in the service today Douglas, Devin, Pat, and Bruce, Bob and Jean, Eric, Corey, and Reverend Barney. Cast of thousands today. <laughs> as, as you heard, the hymn is going to be God Sees the Little Sparrow Fall. It's a, a summer tradition at St. Paul's, and I hope you've remembered to have your tweets and whistles ready. And we'll, we'll let Reverend Barney figure that one out. <laughs> um, now, we also have a, a, an inter-church announcement of a fundraiser for the Sunday School. This coming Saturday, the 26th of June, from 1 till 2 p.m., members of the church are invited to drive by the Mount Community Center and pick up their very own strawberry social. So there'll be um, fresh berries, a wonderful tea biscuit made by Edith, and a small uh, Sunday cup of vanilla ice cream. The idea is that you drive around the circle in front of the building, uh, make a donation, and uh, hurry on home. <laughs> I know there <laughs> for the ice cream mill. <laughs> I know that uh, I know that some of you uh, are not able to drive, and so if you get in touch with with me, I will make arrangements to have something delivered to you. Okay. And just a, just a note as well, that we haven't talked very much about the orphanage in Haiti lately. And I know there's been some unrest in the country, but I'm pretty sure that they're very safe. I wonder if Lori has a comment. Yes, they are You're safe at this time, Cheryl. Um, they're, keeping, they're keeping well. Excellent, thank you, Lori. Um, we still have room for a couple of sponsors. And as uh, we heard earlier, some of the uh, some of the children are aging out of the uh, school, but are looking for trades and uh, college courses, and they might need some financial help. So we appreciate your prayers for the little orphans of Jack Mel, the little angels of Jack Mel. Um, thank you always for your offerings. You know that uh, it's important to the work that we're doing here and around the world. And we are uh, getting ready to call uh, to have Deborah Rolls join us. So uh, there's going to be some uh, meetings on Zoom to uh, help her get started. And uh, we'll have more information about that as it goes along. I think that I would like to uh, stop the announcements now and turn the service over to Reverend Barney Grace, our guest preacher. Thank you, Cheryl. And a good morning to all members and friends of St. Paul's Presbyterian Church in Peterborough. It is indeed my pleasure to be with you this morning. I would like to open our service by paraphrasing just slightly a familiar reading that reminds us of our Heavenly Father. The Lord is my Father. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. 
He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, so I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for you were with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Father forever. Amen to the reading of his most holy word. Let us together bow our heads in prayer. Almighty and loving Father, we come into your presence this morning to give you thanks for the very lives we have. To thank you, O oh God, for always being there for us. We come together this morning, O oh Lord, to worship you, to lift up your name as the Father of all fathers. We lift up your name in prayer, in song, in scripture, and in message. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you bless. Confessing that we are sinners, that we have not always lived in the way that we should have lived, that we have not always said the words that we should have said, had the thoughts that we should have had. But some of the things that we did were wrong. And we ask your forgiveness, O oh God. Father, we come to you in the name of your precious son, our savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray these words together. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, us this, Give us this day our daily, daily bread, bread. And forgive us our debts, debts as we forgive, forgive our debtors. debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As Cheryl mentioned earlier, our hymn today is God Sees the Little Sparrow Fall, which is not in our hymn book. It wasn't in the last hymn book, but it might have been in your grandparents' hymn book from 1918. Sorry, it was in your grandparents' hymn book from 1918. Um, if you have something that goes Twitter or tweet, please feel free to join in on the refrain. But please do not unmute yourself. Zoom is not capable of dealing with all that enthusiasm. Uh, Devin, Devin will be singing for us this morning, and Pat and Bruce are our little birds. And now we'll make, we'll trust ourselves to technology. Um, could we, 
I have to just reset something very quickly. Could we do the offertory prayer while I take care of this and we'll do the hymn? Is that all right, Reverend Barney? Yes, it is. Let us bow our heads together. Almighty God, each week we come together as a family, a family of yours. You have given us the opportunity, the way to continue to support our church during this time of COVID. And we remember, oh Lord, that all that comes in is to do your work here on earth, both locally and abroad. And we ask, oh Lord, that you bless the offerings of the followers of our church. Bless these offerings, oh Lord, to doing your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So what Douglas is trying, what Douglas is doing is, um, What that? <laughs> and have you ever noticed that as we wait, every moment seems to be so much longer? <laughs> but it's really not. It just seems that way. Yeah. Douglas, you might need to um, just play the hymn and not change the words. God sees the little sparrow fall, it meets his tender view. If God so loves the little birds, I know he loves me too. Small. 
Pardon me, yeah. I'm not sure. I know he loves them all. He loves me too. He loves me too. I know he loves me too. Because he loves the little things. I know he loves me too. Now I would like to invite Jean and Bob, Eric and Corey to share scripture with us today. Bob and Jean, you'll, you'll have to unmute your. Yeah, Bob and Jean, you, uh, you're muted, so you'll have to unmute. There you go. Okay. It's uh, Jean and Bob, and we are reading Psalm 68, verses 1 to 5 from the Good News Bible. God rises up and scatters his enemies. Those who hate him run away in defeat. As smoke is blown away, so he drives them off. As wax melts in front of the fire, so do the wicked perish in God's presence. But the righteousness are glad and enjoy in his presence. They are happy and shout for joy. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Prepare a way for him who rides on the clouds. His name is the Lord. Be glad in his presence. God, who loves his sacred temple, cares for orphans and protects widows. Here ends the reading. Amen. Good morning, everyone. This is Eric Prue. I'm coming to you from the Family Father's Day festivities in beautiful downtown Duro. The second reading today is from Proverbs 4, verses 1 through 5, from, and I'm taking it from the Good News Translation. The Benefits of Wisdom. My children, listen to what your father teaches you. Pay attention, and you will have understanding. What I am teaching you is good, so remember it all. When I was a little boy, my parents' only son, my father would teach me. He would say, remember what I say and never forget it. Do as I tell you and you will live. Get wisdom and insight. Do not forget or ignore what I say. This is the word of the Lord. Hello everyone, this is Corey. The third and final reading today comes from John chapter 10, is verses 22 to 30 from the Good News Bible. Jesus is rejected. It was winter and the festival of the dedication of the temple was being celebrated in Jerusalem. Jesus was walking in Solomon's porch in the temple when the people gathered around him and asked, how long are you going to keep us in suspense? Tell us the plain truth. Are you the Messiah? Jesus answered, I have already told you, but you would not believe me. The deeds I do by my father's authority speak on my behalf. Yes. But you will not believe, for you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never die. No one can snatch them away from me. What my Father has given me is greater than everything, and no one can snatch them away from the Father's care. The Father and I are one. Here ends this reading. Thanks be to God. And I say thank you to each of the readers for sharing with us today. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, we give you thanks, O oh Lord, for the road that you lay before us. 
for teaching us, O oh Lord, how to maneuver through life. And we pray, O oh Lord, that we will walk in your wisdom, that we would do as you say to do. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we look at our calendars, including the ones that we purchased from the Presbyterian Church of Canada. We see that, <clears throat> excuse me, the third Sunday in June has been marked to remember, to celebrate, and to give thanks for fathers. But I believe it would be okay to include grandfathers and great-grandfathers. Also, though, I have a wee bit of a problem with it. <clears throat> So tomorrow is the first official day of summer. According to the digital method of timing, summer officially begins at 11.32 this evening, whether we are up or not. Either way, I want to wish everyone a blessed and happy summer. May we give thanks that we serve an awesome God, a God who is the father of all, a father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitat. Psalm 68, verse 5. Two years and a few months ago, two years and a few months, pardon me, into our marriage. My wife, Linda, broke the good news that we were going to be parents. To say the least, I was elated. Me, a father? But when the dust settled, so to speak, I wondered, was I really qualified to be a father? What would I have to do to prepare for this change in our lives? Was our home large enough? Was I earning enough yearly income? The questions actually came faster than the answers. But we were blessed that we had attended and were attending a church. And we also had a faith. We knew that God would be with us through this new road of our journey in life. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. John 10, 29. I have chosen to speak today on the fulfilling of the role as father. On the qualifications perhaps that we should be looking at. If in this great country of ours, it was customary to advertise for fathers, then I'm sure that we would only advertise for top men as fathers. Fathers are not only men who father children, but men whom God entrusts a holy responsibility to raise the next generation. Fathers are to do so with a willing and loving spirit. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. Proverbs. Or one. Of course, fathers do not stand alone. The lady whose day we held up just a few short weeks ago also navigate the tides of raising children along with the father. As well, in our world, we notice sometimes 
because of unusual circumstances that some fathers must also take on the role of being a mother to their children. Likewise, in some cases, some mothers must also be fathers to their children as well. In God's design, however, it is intended that each will have their own role and that while blending their gifts, the family will know the ultimate aim that arises from a common hope and planning. Nevertheless, if we were to circulate handbills and advertise in newspapers, we would all insist that we want only top men for the role of father. Hear my children, the instruction of a father and give attention to no understanding. Proverbs four, verse one. This does not mean that men must have means or wealth or even dashing good looks. Being a top man also does not mean that they must be academic geniuses or gifted leaders. The top men this world needs to raise children are not human gods, but gods, humans. Men who know him and are open to his will for themselves and for their families. Top men are men who come to God in prayer for the needs of their families. Men who perhaps experience the bottom falling out of life and continue to strive to bring joy to and for their families. Top men are sinners saved by God's grace. They are not perfect in themselves, but they are men who strive in love to be the best they can, the best they can be for God. I and my father are one. John chapter 10, verse 30. Fathers who succeed implant in their children something more than family likeness. They implant love for Jesus Christ and his church. These are top men, for they have given their sons and daughters the Lord as the family's ultimate head. Indeed, fathers do not have a significant role to play in the raising of their children. such as mothers often do. If mothers seem to have a more formative role early in the lives of their children, fathers are also to have a formative role in their children's lives, both when they are babies, toddlers, adolescents, teenagers, and yes, young adults. As parents, fathers and mothers are to encourage their children in a faith journey that will help meet the demands of life on this earth. And there are a lot of demands. It takes many families of faith to build a strong community and country. Whether fathers and mothers are bricklayers or politicians, educators or farmers, truck drivers or doctor, doctors. The importance is in whom they serve because whom they serve affects how they will live. How we live reflects on community and our country. Let us on this day in which we honor fathers 
considered a whole wide realm of the Christian family. Let us bow at the altar of God, the ultimate father who nurtures us beyond the material necessities of life. Let us show that life as family is to be enjoyed, cherished, and most of all filled with purpose as we follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for life on this earth. And we know through your word that life will not always be easy. But you walk with us, Lord, and we with you, making life possible more enjoyable with purpose and on this father's day O oh lord may we remember our fathers our grandfathers our great grandfathers and their teaching and may we also O oh lord especially remember the ultimate word of teaching that comes in your scripture. May we follow it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our piano solo. As we take a moment to reflect on all that we've heard so far on this Father's Day, and this summer, I will play another verse of our. Sorry, Barney, we'll have to ask you to unmute. Am I unmuted? Yep. Thank you. Let us bow our heads together in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, O Lord, for this day and for our part in it. Thank you, O oh God, that you have entrusted us to be the hands and the feet of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And on this day that we set aside to lift up and to celebrate fathers, may we not forget that you are indeed the Father of all creation. The father who allowed his son to go to the cross for our sins. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Today, O oh Father, we bring to you the prayers of our congregation that are not only within the congregation, but beyond the walls of our 
building the borders of our towns and throughout the world. We hold up to you, O oh Lord, each person who is going through a time of crisis, whatever that crisis might be, be it sickness, be it unemployment, be it family stress, be it worry about a loved one, not within our walls and perhaps living abroad. We ask, O oh Lord, that you give us that special message that we are not alone, that you are with us, that wherever we may travel, whatever we may do, we are not alone. That your strength and your love will be there. Gracious and almighty God, we hold up to you, the young people of our church, of our community, of the world. And we pray, O oh God, that they will have the opportunity to know you. To know your great and wonderful abilities to work in their lives. And Father, we pray for the upcoming Sunday school event where money will be raised to do good, to teach, to reach out. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who are in beds today. Lay the side in need of your healing and your love. And if physical healing, O oh Lord, is not to be, then we pray for the ultimate healing of being taken home, of being taken into your care and your fold where pain and suffering are no more. And we know that losing a loved one, a friend, is not easy. But remind us, O oh God, that one day, because of our faith, our belief in Jesus Christ, we shall be together again. Oh, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this great country in which we live. And we know that at the moment we are going through some very difficult times with the children who were found in unmarked graves. And we cannot begin to fathom how that could be. But we pray, O oh Lord, that you would touch the hearts of each one who are related to those children. That you would give us a way to walk through this difficult time to remember and not forget our brothers and sisters in pain. Father, we pray for the leaders of this country, of this province, of this region, as they walk us through COVID-19. We know that it's not easy. And none of us would probably not trade places with them. We pray, O oh Lord, that you give them guidance, wisdom, and courage to take us through this pandemic to the other side. That needles will be into the arms 
of your people, both the first and the second, leading us forward. And in times like this, we remember that Jesus did not promise us that life would always be easy. But he did say that I will be with you. And Father, our prayers go beyond this great country called Canada. We pray for people in third world countries. We pray for people in countries beyond our borders, that they will have peace, that they too will overcome all of the hazards of life that must be overcome. We pray for the missionaries, oh God, who work in third world countries, whose work has no doubt been interrupted by COVID-19. But as you have given us a way to worship, we pray that you would give them a way to spread the love of Jesus Christ. Gracious and almighty God, in the hearts and souls of each one who is a part of our service this morning, there is a prayer. Hear their prayer in this moment. Father, we pray for the Church of Jesus Christ, regardless of denomination or location. We pray for St. Paul's, that they will continue to move forward lifting up the name of Jesus and giving hope to the world. And one more prayer, O oh Lord. We pray for those who have lost recently loved ones and friends, that they will receive that peace that passes all understanding. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Barney. Of course. If you would like to unmute your telephones or devices, telephones at star six will unmute you and we'll do our sending forth together. Which comes from, we'll do an echo style. It's from the prophet Micah. What does the Lord require of you? <laughs> what, what, what does the Lord, Lord require of you? Require of you? To, seek justice, to seek justice, justice, and love kindness, and, love and, kindness, love kindness, and, kindness and, and walk humbly with your God. And walk humbly with your God. In our benediction today, I would say to you, as you go forward on the journey of life, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, who loves you more than words can say. This we pray in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Barney. That's uh, my pleasure. A wonderful, a wonderful message for us.